Welcome to East London. I'm on my way to check out some of the coolest wines from Central Europe, not just Czech Republic. We got countries like Germany, Slovakia, Slovenia, even Hungary. We're here in the Basket Press shop with Yuri. Hello. Czech wine expert. But it's not all about Czech wines today. We're going to be looking at five different countries in Central Europe. So you know what, Yuri? I need to apologize for all the wine drinkers because we're very lazy. <laughs> and we just keep drinking French, Italian and Spanish wines because they're easy and accessible and they're familiar. I'm guilty of that myself, actually. But really, we need to kick up the arse from people like you to start drinking these. Reka Conch from Hungary. Wow. Yes, aromatic nose. The vineyards are based all the way in, uh, in the east of Hungary, right on the border with Ukraine, in a place called uh, Barabash. She works mainly with field blends, stuff like um, Kerala Lanika, Harsh Sevalu, Ferment, and there's a touch of Riesling in this. It explodes in your mouth with apricot and grips your mouth as well. Do you, has it had a bit of skin contact? It has a little bit of skin contact, a couple of days. Um, that's got so that, structure. Uh, is that, that why the fruit is so precise yeah. and so and bright. so vivid? Yeah, so bright. And that precise. is very impressive yeah. wine. That do you know what got me on Hungarian wines? There's this guy called Attila Homana. Yes. And he's a DJ in New York. <laughs> Think about that DJ in DJ New, York, New York, and then he and then he went back to his home country and started making wine. So that's Hungary, but yeah, that's incredible wines. Yeah. The, the depth of those wines is, is mint. So. Now we are now we are in the in the Czech Republic, actually in Moravia. All the actions happening in Moravia. We're in uh, your home country now, aren't we? That is, yeah, it's my home country, yeah. So I'll, <laughs> I'll be the judge of this. <laughs> yeah, because you're biased. Am I biased? Yeah. So the grape variety Welsh Riesling, it's not from Wales, is it? It's not from Wales, yeah. So it's your you know burst your bubble out there. This grape is not usually made into very you know high class wines, but uh, in Moravia it has actually a really high status. It's got the aromatics, yeah. it's got the acidity, but the interesting thing about this one is I'm smelling botrytis, I'm smelling honey, I'm smelling, I'm smelling grapes that might have been left on the vine for a long time and rotten a bit. Is that, is yes. that what it is? Rotten but, in, um, in the best possible way. <laughs> you, you smell it and you think this could be a sweet wine and then you put it in your mouth and it's bone dry. Another amazing wine from Petekora. That is amazing wine. Yeah. Stecker. Yeah. Stecker. Stecker. So these Stecker wines, right? If you're a Natty wine fan, you've probably had the legendary orange wines from Slovenia, from Radikon um, and Gravna. Well, they're Italy, aren't they? But this is just across the border in Slovenia. I've been a big fan of these wines and no one imported them, but now you're bringing them in. In Slovenia, basically this region is called Goriška Brda. It's like the, you know, if you want to find a holy grail of orange wine, that's where you go. But these wines can age for many decades as well. They've got the structure, they've got the substance to, to last decades. I remember having this particular wine, I had it in a 2002 vintage. Yeah. Still tasted young, still had to decant it. It's not super tannic, it's not super grippy, uh, but has the complexity, you know, it will age beautifully. So for you orange wine fans, a bit of stecker. A stecker. So we're drinking Vida Magula now, Slovakian legend. You'll see this bottle, the labels look mint. Um, the, Frankovka, that's Blau Frankish, isn't it? Yes, yeah. That's the one that's like really purple and a bit smoky. But the one we're drinking now, Carbonic, um, if you're a Beaujolais fan and you like the wines with lots of fruit, light colours, bubblegum aromas and that, um, this is made in that same style where they keep the grapes whole and um, you get all of that nice colour but not a lot of tannin. Not much tannin, So it's yeah. very smashable. Um, but Vina Magula needs no introduction. So we're going to be drinking Max Sein. I don't think I've ever had this. No, I don't think you have. New, new one for me. It's new one for you, and uh, it's another grape, which is, even though it's so, uh, you know, classy, uh, it's not really been made in a still red. It's, um, it's Pinot Meunier. So Pinot Meunier, good in cool climates. You'll find this in Champagne region, so most Champagnes have got a bit of this, but this is yeah. a still red wine made out of Pinot Meunier. Interesting. What, which part of Germany is it? Uh, this is from Franconia. Franconia? Franken, Franconia. 
In, in Franken, the, the wines have got them flask bottles, haven't they? Yeah. Very yeah, unfashionable. Very unfashionable. <laughs> yeah. very but this is a, this is a cool looking bottle. Though. This is uh, this is something a bit different. Uh, it's nice. It's, it's juicy, but it's got some seriousness, powdery mm. tannins. It's quite savoury. It reminds me a little bit of like a cool climate Pinot Noir, but it's it's got some. It's got quite a bit of structure to it as well. A structure, a little bit. A little bit a bit earthy. No, no oak is. getting in the way. Yeah. It's not it's not got a lot of oak. No, no, no. No lot of oak. It's not, not funky, it's clean, precise. I think that's a really impressive wine. Which is really cool because this is uh, no SO2 added. So no it's, SO2, it's and it's a, that clean. It's, it's a zero zero. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so so with these Central European wines, um, you can't hide behind the producer hype. Um, the wines actually have to taste good. And well, the, the wines aren't that expensive either. They're, they're still really under the radar and underappreciated. I think for the so, for the quality, I mean, yeah, they're very reasonably priced. You um, need a megaphone, man. You need yeah. to you need to go <laughs> on the street and go, yeah, man, stop drinking that French shit. <laughs> so thanks, Yuri, for pointing us in the right direction. Um, My pleasure. I'm I'm going to start drinking more unusual grape varieties, and I'm going to stop stop drinking so much French wine. I'm going to keep an you know an eye on you. I've been a bit on. lazy. Yeah. I'm really sorry. You've gotten lazy. You're okay. <laughs> You know, get your act together again. Keep this on me toes. <laughs>